Welcome to worship with Portage United Church of Christ here in Portage, Michigan. This is worship for the week of November 13th, 2022. We're continuing this week in our worship series called Bless to Me, which is an exploration and an experience into Celtic Christianity and spirituality. And this week, our theme is the struggling times. You know, we will often think of blessings as the good things in our lives. The good things that happen to us, whether we expect them or not, and whether we did anything to deserve them or not. We'll speak of the blessing of a safe home to live in, the blessing of a good job, the blessing of good health, the blessing of a loving family. But what about the struggling times? What about the times when we have to face unexpected illness or death or loss? It's during these times that we'll often say things like, well, maybe this is a blessing in disguise. That's our way of expressing our hope, our optimism that God will bring something good out of this awful situation. It's our way of always looking on the bright side of life. But we know by now that in the Celtic tradition, all of life is already full of blessing. Blessings are not just randomly distributed by God, but rather blessing is. It is the environment in which we live and all of life is steeped in this blessing the good parts and the bad parts, the dark times and the light times, the cold and the warmth are all rich with blessing. So today in worship, we're gonna think about how we can see and experience blessing in these struggling times, not in spite of them, but right there in these difficult times. Because blessing is not meant to deny sorrow. Blessing is not meant to move us past it. Blessing opens up and deepens sorrow. And blessing moves us and accompanies us through it. So please join with me and let us prepare our hearts and our minds and our bodies and our spirits for worship. Blessing When the World is Ending by Jan Richardson Look, 
The world is always ending somewhere. Somewhere the sun has come crashing down. Somewhere it has gone completely dark. Somewhere it has ended with the gun, the knife, the fist. Somewhere it has ended with the slammed door, the shattered hope. Somewhere it has ended with the utter quiet that follows the news from the phone, the television, the hospital room. Somewhere it has ended with a tenderness that will break your heart. But listen, this blessing means to be anything but morose. It has not come to cause despair. It is simply here because there is nothing a blessing is better suited for than an ending. Nothing that cries out more for a blessing than when a world is falling apart. This blessing will not fix you, will not mend you, will not give you false comfort. It will not talk to you about opening one door when another one closes. It will simply sit itself beside you among the shards and gently turn your face toward the direction from which the light will come, gathering itself about you as the world begins again. O God, who brought me from the rest of last night to the new light of this day, bring me in the new light of this day to the guiding light of the eternal. Lead me, O God, on the journey of justice. Guide me, O God, on the pathways of peace. Renew me, O God, by the wellsprings of grace, today, tonight, and forever. Amen. brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in your suffering world, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. For the ravaged earth, oceans and streams, plundered and poisoned, our future, our dreams. Lord, and our madness, carelessness, greed, make us content with the things that we need. Lighten our darkness, breathe.
breathe all this flame until your justice burns brightly again until the nations learn of your ways seek your salvation and bring you their praise god of the poor friend of the weak give us compassion we pray melt our cold hearts let tears fall like rain come change our love from a spark to a flame oh, from a spark to Today we are reading from Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5, 15 and 16. I take refuge in you, God. Please never let me be put to shame. Rescue me by your righteousness. Listen closely to me. Deliver me quickly. Be a rock that protects me. Be a strong fortress that saves me. You are definitely my rock and my fortress. Guide me and lead me for the sake of your good name. Get me out of this net that's been set for me because you are my protective fortress. I entrust my spirit into your hands. You, Holy One, God of faithfulness, you have saved me. My future is in your hands. Don't hand me over to my enemies, to all who are out to get me. Shine your face on your servant. Save me by your faithful love. Busted. <laughs> the tradition of saying God bless you when someone sneezes dates back about 1400 years to the year 590 AD. This is a little bit of fun religious history trivia for you. Pope Gregory the Great was the Pope at the time and this was during a period when the bubonic plague was terrorizing the people of Europe. Pope Gregory called for litanies and processions and unceasing prayers to be lifted up, asking for God's help and God's protection. When someone sneezed, they were immediately blessed. Hence, God bless you because it was believed that a sneeze was the first sign of the plague. Probably sounds familiar to a lot of us going through years of COVID and having allergies as well, right? It was also believed that when you sneezed, a piece of your soul would escape through your nose. And saying God bless you would prevent the devil from getting a hold of your soul. Now, I am pretty sure that most all of us today no longer believe that a piece of our soul escapes from our nose whenever we sneeze. I didn't dash anyone's. Okay. But I am also quite sure that each of us has passed through experiences in our lives when it felt like we lost a piece of our soul. Or that someone somewhere with ill intent had grabbed on to our soul and was clenching it tightly in their fist. We talk about blessings in our modern days as good things that happen to us. We are blessed with good health, with good friends, with a good job, with a roof over our heads. But here's the thing. We take this notion we have about blessings and let this idea shape how we face the times when we are struggling 
we will suggest that maybe this is a blessing in disguise. It's our way of expressing optimism, I suppose, the way of expressing hopefulness that God will bring something good out of a really awful situation. But I'm not buying that. Unexpected or anticipated, these soul-gripping times are passages in our lives that we all go through and none of us wants to go through them. They are times of thresholds, like we talked about last week. Thresholds where we find ourselves in a place where one season of our life is ending and what is coming next is just far too uncertain or frightening for any sense of comfort. Many of us have faced life-threatening or debilitating illnesses, either for ourselves or for someone we love. We all know the sting of grief that comes with the death of a loved one. A life partner, a parent, a sibling, a child, a dear friend. These are the very obvious times of struggle in our lives. But there are also more subtle passages that we move through that are also losses and bring us into thresholds of grief. Last week, we spoke of getting your driver's license as a real significant and exciting life passage. But think about the other end of this life passage when we can no longer drive because our vision isn't good enough anymore or our reflexes aren't what they used to be. And now our driver's license sits in our wallet as a memory of a past season of life when we had some independence. There are also losses that many of us know of broken relationships, fractured relationships with siblings, with our parents, with children, with friends. Getting fired from a job is a significant loss and an alienating feeling. Each of these passages, whether the really obvious ones or the more subtle ones, each of these passages, as we go through them, we struggle with them, and in the process, discover that we are no longer the person we once were. I vividly recall sitting in the courtroom in Morristown, New Jersey, the day the final judgment of divorce was read aloud. Appearing that the plaintiff and defendant were married on August 4th, 1984, it is on this 15th day of December 2009 ordered that the marriage between the parties be and the same hereby is dissolved and the parties are divorced from the bonds of matrimony. I wept as the judge read those words, even though I'm the one who filed for divorce. And the 23 years of our marriage played before my eyes like a movie. 
I was no longer the person I had been for the last 23 years of my life. Blessing in disguise? Nah. I just can't believe that God disguises blessing in such pain as broken relationships or debilitating illnesses or the loss of independence. That's cruel. But that doesn't mean that blessing isn't present in the midst of sorrow and loss. Author Kate Bowler reminds us that the English word for blessing derives from the old English word blessed chain and the Germanic word blodison, which means to mark as holy with blood. Originally, these words spoke of altar sacrifice involving blood. The connection between blood and blessing, she writes, fits what I know to be about life. It is sometimes bloody. It is often a blessing. It's usually both. Anyone who's ever read the Beatitudes knows that Jesus did not consider blessedness to be about happiness and security. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. In reality, the, across the biblical tradition, Blessed is not about good feelings and security. Rather, across the biblical tradition, to be blessed means to have the unconditional regard of God and God's promise that you will be sustained now and redeemed into the future. Let me say that again. In the biblical tradition, to be blessed is not about good feelings. To be blessed is to have the unconditional regard of God and God's promise that you will be sustained now and you will be redeemed into the future. What better time to know this experience of blessing, to know the unconditional regard of God in the depths of our soul, even when that soul feels stolen from us. What better time to know this than when we are struggling in the depths of sorrow and grief? God's blessing does not need to come to us disguised in pain and loss because God's blessing is, quite simply, God's sustaining presence. And the Celtic tradition reminds us that God's presence saturates all of creation. And therefore, blessing saturates all of life. It's the environment we live in. It's the air we breathe. When we are stressed, when we struggle, when we are lost, we are held in the intertwining of heaven and earth and time and eternity. May the nourishment of the earth be yours. May the clarity of light be yours. May the fluency of the ocean be yours. And may the protection of the ancestors be yours. And so may a slow wind work these words of love around you 
an invisible cloak to mind your life. Thanks be to God. Let us gather our hearts and our spirits and pray for our community and our world. Because you made the world and intended it to be a good place and called its people your children, because when things seemed at their worst, you came in Christ to bring out the best in us. So gracious God, we gladly say, goodness Goodness is stronger than than evil, evil. love Love is stronger than than hate. Because confusion can reign inside us despite our faith, because anger, tension, bitterness, and envy distort our vision, because our minds sometimes worry small things out of all proportion, because we do not always get it right. We want to believe light Light is stronger stronger than than darkness, darkness. truth Truth is stronger stronger than than lies. lies. Because you have promised to hear us and are able to change us and are willing to make our hearts your home, we ask you to confront, control, forgive, and encourage us as you know best. And so we cherish in our hearts that which we proclaim with our lips. Goodness Goodness is stronger stronger than evil. evil. Love is stronger than hate. Light is stronger stronger than darkness. darkness. Truth Truth is stronger than lies. In these moments of silence, add the prayers you are longing to express. Hear our prayer, Holy One, and change our lives until we illustrate the grace of the God who makes all things new. We pray this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our God, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen thank you for being with us in worship this week we greatly appreciate and value your presence whether it's online or with us here in person. We're glad to have you join us. If you would like to support our ministries and our mission here at PUCC, please remember to go to our website and click the donate button where you can make a financial contribution to support our work and our ministry here in Portage as well as around the world. So my friends, I leave you this week with these words of benediction. May God bless us. May God keep us in the Spirit's care and lead our lives with love. May Christ's warm welcome shine from our hearts and Christ's own peace prevail through this and every day. Amen. My life flows on an endless song Above earth's lamentation I hear the sweet though far off hymn That hails a new creation Through all the tumult and the strife I hear the music ringing It finds an echo in my soul, a 
How can I keep from singing? What though my joys and comforts die, my Savior still is living. What though the shadows gather round, a new song Christ is giving. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. Since love commands both heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? I lift my eyes, the cloud grows thin, I see the blue above it. And day by day this pathway smooths, since first I learned to love it. The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am Christ's. How can I keep from singing? The peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am Christ's. How can I keep from singing?